Luke chapter 16 verse 16. Let's read it together before you sit down. Amen. Let's read it. One, two, go. The law and the prophet were unto John. Since then, the good news of the kingdom of God is preached. And everyone forces his way into it. Tell your neighbor, force your way into it. You may be seated in God's presence this morning. The Bible said, everyone does what? F press. King James Version said, they press into it. This version says, everyone forces his way. I've told you that, listen to me. Life is not merciful. And even your brother, when the chips are down, even your brother won't create space for you, as far as this earth is concerned. He wants all the space for himself. Fight to create space for yourself. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? Fight to create space for yourself. You must, you must as a person, be conscious of your life and press into God. Because, listen to me, sir. There are so many things that wants to make sure you don't get your destiny achieved. So many. I, I told you that if you're going to press into God, there are factors. There are factors that must enable you press into God. Otherwise, it will be a futile experience or adventure. If you're going to press into God successfully, you must be convinced of the kingdom, this kingdom. If you're going to press into this kingdom and take your place in this kingdom, you must have this conviction, this conviction that nothing can take you out of. It was that conviction that kept Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, took them to the fire. It was that conviction that made Daniel look at the king after the king's decree that no one should pray to another god. And Daniel went out of the parliament where the decree was signed, went straight to his chambers, opened his window towards Jerusalem, knelt down and began to pray. The same day, he dared the king because there is a kingdom bigger than the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar. Are you following what I'm saying here, sir? Are you following what I'm saying here, sir? There is a kingdom. It was that conviction that made Abraham to leave his father's house, his country, his kindred. The Bible said in the book of Hebrews that he was looking for a city whose build, who, that has a foundation, whose builder and maker was God. Men had dead things because of the conviction of this kingdom of God. And I said number two is what? Know it that you are what? a part of this kingdom and that God intentionally made you a part of that kingdom. Let it not be something anyone tells, tries to convince you to believe. Let it be something that you know. Are you full I'm saying, sir? Let it be something that you know. I tried to demonstrate the difference between believing it and knowing it. Do you believe that your father is your father? No, you did not believe. You know that your father is your father. Believing is that you never grew up with your father. And then one day I brought you and said, this is your father. And you say, hey, really? His nose looks like my nose. Even though he's more handsome than me. But okay, I believe. But if you grow up with him, you started seeing him from where you were a, a toddler. Recognizing that this is daddy. And at 18 years, somebody's coming and say, I want to introduce your father to you. You will look at the person and say, Are you? That's the state we must get to. And on Wednesday, I was telling her, I said, You see, certain things happen in our lives where we look at God and feel that the stake of God is too high. That was where I stopped, right? How many of us believe here now that some rules and regulations of God are too high? Okay, you don't believe. Many of us seated here now and believe that God, your own Lord, too much. 
I remember one day I finished preaching, my sister came to me and said, Oh, if God, if God was close, he said, First of all, now stone I go take wake him up. You see, she, she was talking based on how she feels. She was talking ba- Many of you, you feel that way. You say it in your heart, but you just, you just try to pretend. Many of us feel that the stake of God is high. But listen to me, sir. God's stake is not high. God's stake are simply his modus operandi of the kingdom. The kingdom you belong to, the kingdom you are pressing into, this is how it operates. And God will keep it that way to enable you become, to enable you fulfill the destiny he has created for you. If God slows down the modus operandi, you will never be able to fulfill the destiny that God has ordained for you. I was, I was listening to a documentary of the eagle and they said that the eagle, when it's 40, the eagle have the tendency of living up to 70, 80 years. And that when the eagle is 40, he either dies or renew itself. And how does he renew itself? It goes up because at that time the claws, the pigs, and everything had grown, and it's not as sharp and it's not able to perform as it used to perform anymore. If he leaves it that way, hunger will kill it. What does he do? He goes to a high mountain, scratched it so much that it thing pulls out. Pain uses the mouth to scratch until the thing pulls out, and new ones begin to come out, and then he begins to pull up the old feathers pulls off everything and the body remains bare and he can be there for about three months or more than and then after that he comes out a brand new eagle with a new life now listen when the eagle refuses to go through that process it dies prematurely many Christians want to be eagle Christians Many believers want to be eco believers, but we don't know what it takes to go through renewal process. That's that's God's, that's what we call God's take. That's what we call God's take. We are not ready to lose anything for the kingdom. You want the kingdom. You want all the benefits of the kingdom. You want the power, the glory, the anointing of the kingdom. You want when you talk, the kingdom, anywhere you go, the kingdom should back you up and defend you in all that you do. But listen, you must lose some things to gain kingdom. Are you following what I'm saying, sir? That's why Jesus answered Peter in Matthew chapter 19 if you read from verse 27 when Peter asked him and said Lord we have left all to follow you what shall be our gain Jesus didn't say you are stupid he didn't say you are a greedy man upon all the things I have done for you I have torn fish I have torn five loaves of bread I have used to feed five thousand all this while I have been the one feeding you and taking care of you and you are very stupid no Jesus answered him are you here with me Jesus said listen he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in this generation, when the Son of Man shall sit on his throne of glory, the throne of his glory, you will also sit with him, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. He said, and that is not all. He said, In this earth, everything you have left, are you following, sir? Everything you have left to follow me, land father mother wife everything you have left to follow me he said you will have them back he said and above in hundredfold and in addition the kingdom you're looking for but you see you must live to follow there must be a living you must step out the faith we believe in say there must be a living to be able to get what you're looking for. If you're not willing to live, then you are not prepared to get. And you see, it is that living that we call God's high stake. Talk to me. Yeah, that's what we call God's high stake. 
But you see, there's a parable in the in the in the Bible that Jesus gave that gave a better understanding. And that's the parable of the sower. Look at Matthew chapter 13 from verse 18. That's what many Christians are missing. He said, Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. Go on. He said, When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one. And does what? And catches away that which was what? Sown in his heart. Many Christians don't understand the modus operandi of the kingdom. That's the major challenge we have. The Christians have. We don't understand how the kingdom of God, what it is and how it functions. So when we come here, the word of God like this and... Because of lack of understanding it, we just, ah, Pastor, just talk. Hello. Go on to the next verse. He said, But he that received the seed into the stony place is the same that heareth the word and anon with joy received it. And yet he had no what root in himself. He didn't meditate and allow the thing to sink down. He didn't think about it the second time. So it endures for a while. Then what happens? Test came. Test came. Because you see, it is not the lecturers that introduced test. It's God that introduced test. So when tests come, tribulation or persecution arises because of what? Talk to me. Because of that word of the kingdom that you had. Because tribulation and trial, you, you see, you cannot be a mass comm student and then they are setting exam of medicine for you. Tribulation doesn't come because of what you used to be. Or who you used to be. Or what you used to know. Tri tribulation comes to test what you just had. That message of the kingdom you just had. Tribulation comes to test it whether it has root in your heart or not. I've always told you Satan is fighting you and he's fighting your marriage. Is he fighting your marriage that he wants to marry your spouse? He will come to test the word of God in you. I'm robber stole your car because Satan wants to drive your car. No. It is what you're carrying on the inside that is test is being tested. That's what is being tested. Are you following me? Go to the next verse, sir. He, he also that received the seed among tongues. He see that heareth the word and the cares of this world. Oh, my mates are getting married. I'm not yet married. Oh, this is happening to this. Ah, oh, did you hear that that guy just bought a car? I've not bought a car. Ah, hey, promotion just came out. Ah, hey, hey. The curse of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. The deceitfulness of what? Of riches. Why did the Bible say deceitfulness of riches? Unfortunately, we don't learn. Somebody will spend a whole week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, go to work. On Sunday morning, we say, I'm too tired to go to church. But next week, by 6 a.m. on Monday, he's already on his way again. But you have seen people who die and leave all those things. Deceitfulness of riches. Because of it, what, your, what has no eternal value? You spend the whole of your life pursuing something that has no eternal That when you close your eyes now, it doesn't matter about your destiny anymore. But that's, that's what we pursue. The deceitfulness of riches. The Bible said, when it comes, it does what? It chokes the word. It chokes the word. And the word becomes what? Unfruitful. What the word is intent to do in your life. It chokes it. The Bible says, But he that received the word into the good ground is he that heareth the word and does what? Oh. 
he that reads the word and understands it, the same also does what? Bears fruit and bringeth forth. He does not just bear, he brings forth. Ah, are you full of sir? He does not just bear. He, what he's saying that if he bears, it is just for maybe for himself alone to consume. And, but when he brings forth, all that's now begin to in a larger quantity. And the Bible said, and some bring forth in hundred, some in sixty, and some also in thirty, based on their levels of understanding. So how do you understand God's take? How do you see God's take? Many people have withdrawn from this race because they see God as one difficult God. Many people have withdrawn from this race because they see the church as one boring place. I have told you this, sir. I have not been born again for too long. But I've been born again since 1994. I don't know how many years that is now. But listen to me, sir. Since I have never been bored about this Christianity, I have never felt bored one day about Christianity. Ask my wife. See, we've been married now for 19 years. Ask her whether I have one day sat down and I'm just thinking, I can't pray to that. I don't feel like praying. They are, I'm, I'm in a bad mood. I don't feel like going to bad mood. Bored. How? At this level, bored. Am I communicating to somebody here? Talk to me. Are you still here with me? That's why the proverb, the, the preacher began to tell us in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. He said, Wisdom is what? Is a principal thing in all thy getting, get understanding, get understanding. So that when somebody, are, are you full? I'm saying, sir, I've told you how my wife was when my wife was delivering her first child, and then I, I, I was looking at her, you know, the the pain of contraction and everything. She was dancing, and then the, the labor had taken so long, and we because of our ignorance. She will tell me, I'm feeling hot, I'm feeling hot. I will, go, I will prepare cold water. She will use cold water to bath. And we didn't know that that thing was affecting the... <laughs> are you following me? When we got there, the woman checked. He said, you are, you, are not go, you are now going to start the... But as at that time, six hours was already gone. She has already been in that for six hours. And I said, ha! And at the time, I couldn't bear it anymore. Le kayakata! Barakate! I command you pay! The woman said, shut up! Pastor! He said, if this pain ceases, you will not see your child. Hey! It changed my, it changed my understanding. If this pain ceases, you will not see your child. He said, it is the process for the child to come out. This pain must continue until this child there's something you are pregnant of of God. And if that thing is going to come out, you are going to understand the modus operandi of God. You must understand that the pain you must go through to bring for that child. It's not enough to hold on to the prophecy and say, oh, I'm pregnant of great thing. I'm carrying Jesus. Listen, if Jesus must come out, you must go through the pain of contraction. So you must know and understand these things. You must know and understand this thing. Understanding is born out of knowing God. Is born out of the knowledge of God. Understanding the modus of is born of the kingdom. Is born out of the knowledge of who God is. That's why Paul in Philippians chapter three, if you read from verse ten, he said that I may know Him and the power. Of his resurrection. Somebody said that I might know him. I want to know him. How he functions. Because he's the king of this kingdom. And I've told you that kingdoms are not ruled by sentiments. They are ruled by constitutions. And principles. When you know the king. You will know how the kingdom is. 
the fellowship of his suffering be made conformable even unto his death go on if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead go on not as though I have already attained there's a height set for me I have not attained that height neither we are already perfect but I follow after what he says that I pursue I forcefully press on but I follow after if that I may apprehend can you give me maybe from ESV or I, 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 there's something I want to bring out here thank you look at this not that I have already attained this or I'm already perfect but I do what I press on to make it what I showed you a scripture in Luke chapter 12 verse 32 it is the father's good pleasure to give you I am pressing in to make it what mine because Jesus Christ has made it what his own talk to me I want to know what Christ knows. I want to go through what he went through. That thing that he went through that brought him to the seat of glory. Me. I also want to press in. Are you still here with me? He said, brothers, I do not consider that I have what? I have made it my own. He said, but one thing I do, forgetting what? What lies behind what? Are you here with me? Are you here with me? Forgetting what lies behind me. It doesn't matter the victories and the shame and the reproaches I have borne in the past. I am pressing on to what lies what ahead. Go on, sir. He said, I press towards what? The goal. What is your goal? My goal is at the end of the day to get to this kingdom. It's not just getting there. To stand before Jesus because I'm already in the kingdom. To stand before Jesus and then receive well done, thou good and faithful servant. That's my goal, oh. Oga, okay, listen to me, sir. In case you don't know this man, that's my goal. Paul said, I press on towards the goal for the price of the upward call of God in Christ. Verse 15. Let those of us who are matured think this way. Do I have mature men and women in this house? Think of the goal. Pressing. Think this way. Stop thinking what shall I eat, what shall I drink, what shall I put on. Think this way. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. Am I talking to somebody here? Think this way. Think this way. Paul began to tell the Ephesians, he said, I pray, when I heard of you, I began to pray for you. That the God will give you the spirit of revelation and understanding in him. That you may know what is the hope of your calling. That you may know what is the hope of your calling. Are you here with me, sir? I began to pray for you. That you will know what is the hope of your calling that Jesus said to us, he said, listen, seek first. Seek first. The kingdom and its righteousness.
addressing your God. The Bible said that for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. There's listen to me, sir. There's glory in this kingdom. Press in, and you'll be amazed at what God is going to do with your life. Rise up to your feet.